What's up, everybody? It's Heated Seats here. This intro will be quick, I promise. I just wanted to showcase a private league that I've been racing in the past few weeks that you might be interested in if you are getting tired of sport mode. It's called Snail, or Sunday Night American Interactive League. It's a three-combo spec racing league that races every Sunday night, and it's open to anybody who's willing to go through the sign-up process. I'll link the information thread that's on the screen right now in the description below, and I encourage you to check it out if you're looking for something a little different. Anyways, let's get right into the race. So today we're racing uh, FDRX7s at Blue Moon Speedway, one of my favorite cars in real life and probably my favorite fake track in Gran Turismo. We get a decent start here, but Flamo starts cutting us right up against the wall really early. He had to dodge hard because I'm not sure who it was in front of him that uh, had a terrible start. Everyone very cautious in the turn one. Coming off that bank corner is always tough, but uh, perfect. And we're just going to settle in the seventh place here. Obviously, we've got 11 laps to go, so lots of time to fight. We get a little bit of speed on here, but not enough to really make a move for the next turn. And for whatever reason, I drop it down to second gear. Really screw over Sound Tiger right behind me. And uh, that slowed me down quite a bit. You can see how much I'm dropping back. Coming into the hairpin, decent braking point. You can see so far so good, nobody's really bashing each other around. It's one of my favorite things about this league is that just about everyone drives very respectfully. Heading up towards the last corner before the straightaway. And everyone else was getting a decent line by not breaking before that turn. I just couldn't seem to make it work. I seemed to be losing a lot of speed on that corner in particular. Fortunately though, because of this long straightaway, as long as you're in the slipstream, you can usually stay with the pack in front of you. And that's what we're trying to do right here. Coming on to lap two. We're not that divided as a group just yet. We're still about three seconds behind the leader and there's just chaos up ahead out of nowhere. Looks like JL Bowler in fourth place there just misjudged his breaking point and took out third, so now we've moved up into fourth place. Getting a big purple sector. Nice corner on the power's a little early, and they actually fall off Flano right off into the grass, but don't lose too much speed because the Sound Tiger's gaining a little bit. I'll probably start appearing in the arena momentarily dive up the inside. I lift off because that was completely my fault. I did not want to take that position from him. Just completely misjudged the breaking point. Now, unfortunately, Flano was a lot faster than me. Just in practice, there was no qualifying for this league, but in practice, his lap times are much faster. I'm trying my best to stick with him, but I just can't. And he has no interference in front of him, so I think he's probably just going to run away from me. I'm going to have to deal with Hugo Fan and Sound Tiger catching up to me very soon, I'm sure. Taking a look behind as we caught to the line here. 123, definitely not the fastest lap. Not a whole lot happening here for two laps. We'll just jump ahead into lap five. And you can see Flano has pulled ahead almost three seconds ahead of me. Coming to this corner, I just turn in early and doink the wall. Absolutely <laughs> screw up any chance of keeping that gap. Sound Tiger coming up behind me. I have moved tight onto the inside. And I'm just going to jump back into that slip as soon as I get the opportunity. Getting sixth place now catching up to me here. One twenty three nine, so definitely not the lap I'm looking for. Interestingly, you can see here three very different lines into turn one. We're all sort of just jockeying for position here, fighting for fourth place. I'm hoping I can get in the slipstream and maybe start to catch up to the leader, but just again, turn in early and I bash them all. Screw up my chances of staying with this pack again. Now my only hope is that these guys start fighting and maybe I can catch back up to them again. Fortunately, it looks like the Time loss wasn't too substantial, so if these guys start battling, I should be able to catch them up. Broke a little late there, but managed to hold it together, and you can see I'm already kind of closing the gap again. Down the apex corner here. 
here. One more before we're back on the straightaway, and that's where the slipstream will definitely give me a chance. Decent exit there. We've got a lot of speed coming straight. Fifth place bumps the wall slightly. I'm sure that slowed him down just enough. We'll see how much we're getting in there. Completely in that slipstream, thinking about a move in turn one. We have a little look. Then we can write at the hundred. But we've got to back out a little bit. It's just not gonna stick. It's got the outside line, which is actually much better around turn one. On blue moon. Tack back into the slipstream. Try to get the corner right this time. Looks like we pulled it off. All of us have been pretty evenly paced so far, so I haven't lost a lot to these guys. Fourth place is still a definite possibility for me. Good exit out of the hairpin. Again, just trying to stay in that slipstream. I know the straightaway is coming up, but that's really the best place for me to make a move here. Much closer this time as we come on to the main straight or the bank corner. And a little look. Now he does have the slipstream in fourth place. But I think we might be able to make something stick here. A lot of the times it's just about applying the right pressure to the person in front of you. He runs wide. Maybe to slip up into fifth place. Certainly not out of the woodwork yet. You can see just how close he's behind me. Less than two tenths. Gives me a little tap. Just come through that corner because I slowed down a bit more than he was expecting, I'm sure. Just trying to keep the car stable. It's RX-7s. These are the untuned versions. The stock settings across the board. The only thing you can change is brake balance. And again, turning in too early. I don't know why I was having a big problem with this last night during the races. So we've lost a bit of time on fourth place, but we do have the straightaway coming up, so we should be able to make up something like that. He's getting close to the limit of the slipstream now, so we've got to be very careful. Good exit on the final turn. I call it the final turn, this is probably the final turn. The last one of any real significance before the straightaway. Just ever so slightly gaining on him. Under a second now. 121.9. Good lap for me. We're just going to jump ahead of him here. Not a whole lot happening. You can see coming into turn one, I go for the dive of the century and uh, give him a little tap. That shoves me out of the grass. Fortunately, Sound Tiger pulled out of that okay. I didn't screw his race up as well. And now I've fallen back quite a bit. There's a big, big gap between me and seventh place. And Coming up on two seconds now. We jump ahead to the end of lap 11, and uh, it's up to over three. Had a terrible last lap, obviously, seventh place is caught up a considerable amount, too. But we're going to cross the line here with a 122 1 in sixth place. Not quite the result I was looking for, but a lot of fun. And we're actually going to jump ahead to the next race with Snail. The combo uh, flips the order, so since I finished sixth, I'm now starting in fourth. Got a great start again. Already making the jump on third place. Definitely going to take a wider line and turn one here because he's still up the inside. Now I love this idea. They flip the grid. And we do the race again because it sort of encourages uh, more competitive racing. You get guys who are very good or did very well coming up from the back, trying to fight to the front, and anyone a bit slower can practice their defending. And it kind of gives you a chance at getting a good result again if you had a bad one in the first race. Up towards the hairpin for the first time. Clean 
can run through there. everything I can to get myself in a good position to pick up slipstream on the straightaway. Get a decent exit over there onto the straight. And I'm just going to hold steady here on the slip. And a relatively uneventful second lap, so we'll jump ahead here to the end of that one. Because that's when things pick up a little bit. Let's see. Rowler in front of me here. Hits the wall, that slows him down big time, gives us the the speed to take the inside line. We're going back onto the straightaway. So I've got the speed to a certain extent, but right now he has the slipstream. I'm forced to stay on the inside. You can see he's already starting to crawl back ahead of me. Here he takes the position as we cross the line. But I'm set up decently to make a move in turn one. Break a little bit late. Managed to outbreak and he gets a little squiggly. Take a really tight line. And we're moved up into second place now. Catching up to first. Breaking a little bit early. He gets a little loose. And that gives us the run up the inside. Highly controversial move there using the uh, the curb, but we got it done. Trying to keep the car steady into the hairpin. The RX-7 loves to step out, so if you're very careful keeping it straight, I find you really need to point it the direction you want to go before you can get on the power too much. But now, here we are, about to head on to the straightaway again, now in first place, up three positions. Good exit through here. Of course, we do have to worry because they're going to be barreling down on us on the slipstream. We come on to the actual straight, we stay low, see if everyone starts to peek up, but they come back down to that slip. race pace. Smooth but slow into turn one. We did get a decent exit. We can see we're just probably a tiny bit in second place. We get an awful line through this corner here. Miss the apex completely. Almost run out of the grass. That allows me to catch right back up to me. And then my confidence must be gone. Miss the apex again. You can see just how much he's gaining on me down to under two tenths again. That he's probably going to make a move up the inside. He backs out and gets doinked into first. Shoves me wide and lifts again. So that's another thing I love with Snail. Very respectful driving. Even when incidents happen, people want to give positions back that they don't deserve. So it's coming up in the end of lap four. Lap five, not a whole lot happened. Until about midway, so we're going to jump ahead here. Let's see. Decent run through that corner. I just carry a little too much speed through here. And you run it right off the grass. Don't run the power too hard. Of course, on the grass, no traction. Lose complete control. We lose a lot of positions because of that. Taking the inside line into the hairpin here. Defending as best we can. Coming down towards the double apex. Miss my braking zone and my tire strain, so I just shoot absolutely wide. Flano squeezes through. As we discovered last race, he's a much faster driver than I am, so I didn't fight him too hard on it. Just figured I'd jump on that slipstream and take the opportunity here. I'm just going to jump ahead one more time. You can see as we finish up lap 10, coming on to lap 11, where we're sitting. Now, truthfully, because of the slipstream and how close the group is here, it still really is anyone's race, at least in the top four. I'm probably a little bit out of the running, but definitely going to keep trying here. Looking back, keeping an eye on sixth place there, who's been gaining on me considerably. Break a little bit later, trying this wide line entry and just see how much I slide and blow it. And uh, that actually gives sixth place the opportunity to catch up to me here. It's nice and close. Try to leave him space. He slides a bit, shoves me off into the grass. I did apologize after, so 
no harm, no foul. A bit of a racing incident, I'm sure, but no. Dirty tires, I'm just sliding all over the place. Lost enough speed here that now actually 8th place is going to squeeze up. Take the inside line into the hairpin. We'll leave a bit of space here. Still got a little too close. Get knocked around a bunch. But it's not over just yet. Turn it to double apex one more time. See how close we are. He did get a better exit through there, but we got one last chance here. He runs a bit wide. Has to lift to avoid the wall. That gives us a nice little rundown. In the slipstream. Coming up to the line. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen now. Trying our best, but these cars just aren't powerful enough. Cross the line with a 125-1. We're only three tenths behind him there. And something else worth pointing out with Snail is that there's only about five and a half seconds here between first and eighth place. Obviously, it's a smaller crowd than we normally get. Most of the time, we have 11 or 12 drivers in uh, D2. And there are three divisions running every night. Same combos. So when you sign up, you get sorted into one of these divisions based on a time trial. And uh, it just helps keep the competition fair. So if you've had enough of sport mode, penalties, all that stuff, you can head on over to GT Planet and uh, sign up for Snail Racing. We race every Sunday at 9 p.m. And if you would like to see more sim racing content, be it Gran Turismo, Assetto Corsa, ACC, uh, I have new stuff coming out all the time. You can like and subscribe, and uh, that's probably the best way to support the channel. Thanks so much, guys. I'm Heated Seats. I hope to see you out there.